to Newark upon Trent in Nottinghamshire, the home of Robin Hood. This is the area well known to the evil sheriff of Nottingham and his master, Prince John. John later became king and died right here at Newark Castle in the year 1216, one year after signing the Magna Carta. It is here that you can see and feel the history and legend of Robin Hood. This ancient marketplace is covered with cobblestones that are more than 600 years old. Cobblestones that have been walked on by kings and queens of England for hundreds of years. It is of some interest that Newark was once part of the estates owned by Lady Godiva of Coventry fame. <laughs> This was our destination for the day, Staunton, Staunton in the Vale, and here are the Staunton Arms. I spent a good deal of my childhood living in this village, so I know it quite intimately, including that telephone box. I made my first telephone call from there. I rang up the operator and said, is this the operator on the line? She said yes, so I said, well, get off it, there's a train coming. Oh, I ran as fast as I could. I've only got Coke, is that okay? Yeah, we'll be fine. No ice, did you say? Please? Ice, but no lemon. Lovely, thank you, my darling. And for you? I'll take water. Ice. Yeah, just tap water for you, sir. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, just water. Yeah. That's She's all. saying, do you want tap water or bottled water? Bottled water. Yeah, okay. The tap water is drinkable here, you know. Yes, You've got artesian well. Do don't do it. <laughs> and for the gentleman. It's not, it's, the water is not drinkable in the state, so, you know, I'm surprised you didn't find any. I drink two litres of water a day. <laughs> And it's out of the tap mm. <laughs> because I choose to because I have to for my diet. So. <laughs> what, what is that? Yes, please. Love. It's called a swan neck. Pump. Yes, it is. The village of Staunton only has one street and it dead ends at both ends. At this end, it dead ends at this church of St. Mary Magdalene. A very old church, as churches go. The right side. That's it. Push. When you enter this building, you are reminded immediately of its antiquity. The original church was built in the 600s, and this present one was built on the foundations of that. It was recorded in the Doomsday Book in the year 1086. Those are tombs of crusaders from the First Crusades, just to give you an idea of how old this church is. The church is left unlocked these days in order to minimize damage done by vandals who would otherwise smash their way in through the stained glass windows. During the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell and his roundheads took over this church in order to turn it into a stable for their horses. Cromwell's thugs let their horses drink from this font and then they further desecrated it by using the font to sharpen their swords on. That's why it's worn down at that one side. Hating anything Catholic, Cromwell ordered his thugs to smash anything that looked Catholic inside the church, which is why there's not much left in the way of statuary. This is the nave those overhead heaters didn't exist when I was a lad. There was no electricity, no gas, no running water. 
there was only one pot-bellied stove to heat up this whole church. That's where the choir used to sit, but I was too big of a lad to be in the choir, so the rector had me pump the organ. This organ, which dates back to the mid-1600s. This candle-lit pulpit proved too much for our distinguished visitor. He couldn't resist. Down on the kids, down on the senators. Repent, child, repent. On your knees. On your knees. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. On your knees. Come up, come up here and bend over. I'll get you. Come here. Come here. I bend. I'll get you. That's all right. That's good. Parts of this ancient church actually predate the Norman Conquest of 1066. That gate, for instance, predates Norman Conquest and Norman occupation. And around the top are some interesting artifacts. They are called grotesques. No, the things at the very top, those are called gargoyles. They are water spouts. But the grotesques are around the top of the building and they're intended to ward off the evil spirits of the forest. This was in the middle of Sherwood Forest, remember. And yes, you are looking at what you think you're looking at. So if you think America invented mooning, think again. Those grotesques are over 1,000 years old. And they were saying, spirits of the forest, go away. We don't want you here. We are more powerful. And that's what it was all about. A very ancient building. Staunton may not have figured in any of Agatha Christie's books, but the village of St. Mary Mead would certainly be comparable to this including this old hall. This is where George Staunton lived. He was the rector at the time I was there, and I used to play with his grandson, Edmund, who is the local lord of the manor. This is the stable, and the date over the top is 1655. The hall was built after the Normans came in and occupied the area. But this is just to give you an idea of how ancient this entire land is and these buildings. Driving out on the driveway, there's the stables in the foreground and the church in the background. Yes, it would make a good backdrop to any Agatha Christie novel. And that is what I promised Andre. As we pull out of the driveway and onto the road, look at that brick wall. That brick wall has got several hundred years of changes in it. Some of those brick, of course, are fairly recent, uh, only about a hundred, but look at that. Those go back 350 years, and the stone there go back 600. And this wall, what does it uh, protect? Well, something that Father Bush was very interested in. A very striking and very upmarket rectory. Yes, that's where the parish priest used to live. He wanted one of those. Um, third collection, anybody? The agricultural nature of the land is certainly evident here. And this building is the Women's Institute. This has been around longer than I've been alive. We used to have our school dinners there. In nearby Scarrington, the problem of what to do with cast-off horseshoes was solved here by this blacksmith. He just put them up in one great big tower stack. And that's what that is. 
it's all horseshoes, used horseshoes. They've all been fused together over the time by rain and rust. Look at that. You're looking at 200 years worth of horseshoes in that stack.